Welcome to OSM Operation Safe Mode. Peace be with you. Here we are for a rerun Tuesday in the sacred season of Lent. Just reminding you that all of you should have your handy dandy notebook from your OSM Lenten journey last year. I have mine here and as I was looking through it I thought I would love to share once again these two videos in the next two Tuesdays. This video is groups of three, what, how, how things come in threes through our devotion, our tradition, as well as the life in the church and how God reveals himself. Now in this video you're going to see my buddies because sometimes your favorite threes are me, myself and I and Johnny and John Anthony kind of have a little dialogue going on and I think you'll enjoy it so that's why we left it in. And then we'll go right into the, the video of Groups of Three. Let's look at the OSM mailbag. Today, we have some new letters concerning past episodes. Remember, it's in times like these that saints were forged. So, let us become saints and stay safe in the Lord. Hey, I'm practicing over here. I'm trying to get ready for this kit, and it's important that people know what we're talking about today. Why are you always messing around? This is a serious show. People watch it for the spirituality part, for how we stay safe, and what they can learn about their faith. Oh, come on, John Anthony. Everybody knows they watch it for me. I want to see what kind of crazy things I can come up with today. So let me practice. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to look at the OSM mailbag. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is not the way I thought today was going to go. Guys, stop it, please. John Anthony, I expect more from you. You're the spiritual side of this show. You should be fighting with Johnny over here. We all know he's a clown. There's nothing we can do about that. But both of you are just as important for the show. The two of you together make me. And that's what's important. So never fight among yourselves. Jeez, oh man. I am so glad that I'll bring you guys out separately that often. You know, when people ask me how I'm doing, I often say I'm blessed or I'll say, I could only be better if I was twins. Well, three of us is too many. Me, myself, and I have to be me. These guys. They can't live out on their own. They would really, really make it look bad for me. Too holy, too crazy. Put them together and you have me. So let's get rid of these guys. John Anthony, please go over to church and continue to pray. I'll be over in a little while to see you. Johnny, go think of something funny to say and maybe we'll have you on the next episode. Welcome to OSM, Operation Safe Mode, Praying for a Cure. Peace be with you. I hope you enjoyed meeting my two personalities, Johnny and John Anthony. Those were the names my mother gave them when I was growing up. But who needs three of me? No one. You might wonder, why in the world do I have cut out cardboard posters of myself? Well, during COVID-19, we are not permitted to take pictures with the little ones at First Communion unless we have on a mask. And I thought, I don't want those children to have to have a picture of me with a mask on. So I asked Johnny and John Anthony to stand in for me for the First Communions and they will also be available for confirmation. But right now we really don't need them other than the fact that so often things that we know come in threes. We have Things that we're familiar with, like the Three Stooges, or the Powerpuff Girls, or the Charlie Angels, and Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Those are just a few of the ones that we know. 
But when it comes to spiritual things, three and seven are the most sacred numbers. Now, next Tuesday, we're going to look at things that come in sevens, but today we're going to focus on the things that come in threes. Three is a prime number, the first prime number other than one. The prime number is a number that cannot be created uh, except by a division of itself by one. So three is a divine number. Now, the most divine thing that we know of threes, obviously, is the Holy Trinity that God is one and three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I think you'd be surprised how many different threes there really are. And this quest of numerating them began several years ago when I gave a talk on Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, Jesus' three friends that he would visit quite often. Within that conference, I spoke of many different threes. So today I just want to share some of those threes with you and perhaps maybe you can come up with some of your own and if you would like to uh, send them to us at the OSM mailbag, uh, we can talk about those in a future episode. So let me just speak on some of them that I feel are very interesting. The first on my list is the three confirmations of Mary as the mother of God. Now, we know that it was at the Annunciation that the angel came and spoke to Mary and said, by the Holy Spirit, you will conceive within your womb the child of Jesus. The second affirmation or confirmation of Mary as the mother of God was the visitation. When Mary visited Elizabeth and John leapt in the womb of Elizabeth upon Mary's greeting, behold, you bring forth to me the mother of my Savior. And finally, obviously, at the nativity, when Jesus was born and the kings came to visit, they affirmed Mary in that he was royalty. So that brings us to our next three, the three kings. The three kings bring three gifts that show us an epiphany. Epiphany is a V8 moment when we realize the manifestation of God's presence in our lives. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold for the king of all kings, myrrh for the one who came to die, because myrrh was what was used in burial. And of course, frankincense, it is the smell of the temple for Jesus is the high priest. So remember, Jesus has three callings as he comes to us as priest, prophet, and king, just as the gifts that the kings bring forth teach us as well. Jesus not only had uh, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus as his friends, but he had his three favorite disciples, as we know, Peter, James, and John. They seem to always be the center of all the stories when Jesus goes off to pray or wants to reveal something to his disciples. So when we look at other threes, we have things that are more about our own personal spiritual life. For instance, when we think of a mortal sin, there are three things that are necessary for it to be a serious mortal sin. A mortal sin is when it breaks off our relationship with God. Many times people become confused with this. Number one, it must be a serious offense. Number two, one must have the knowledge and understanding that it is a serious offense against God and his church. And number three, desiring to act upon it and act upon it without care of ruining the relationship with God. So all three of those need to be uh, present. So for instance, we know that murder is a serious offense. So it's serious and we have knowledge of it. And we may be planning to murder someone. And when it's time to pull the trigger, we chicken out. That's not a mortal sin, but it is a serious sin, a venial sin that should be confessed. So you know how that works. In Lent, we know the three disciplines of Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And as many times in my homilies, I compare that to what? The three temptations of Jesus in the desert. If we take a look at the last part of Jesus' life, uh, shown to us in the devotion to the Stations of the Cross, we see three groups of threes. On Sunday, I spoke about the three falls of Jesus. As he gets up from those falls, they denote first the acceptance of the Father's will. The second, 
is the perseverance to carry out his will and the final fall prior to his being stripped of his clothes, of his humanity, and crucified, it is that resolve that is necessary to go to distance in order that the Father's will is known and that we can share in the glory of Christ. But also along that path, we see three helpers. Mary, his mother, represents the help that God gives us through our family, that maternal love that can never be denied, no matter what the suffering is. The second is Simon, who carries the cross for Jesus. He's what I call the coincidental help. It's that situation where you have the children are sick and you're supposed to have people over the house and you wonder how everything's going to happen and then the people call and cancel, they can't come. That's the help we were looking for. It was just coincidental, but it was certainly well needed. It's kind of the physical and the mental side of things. And then finally we have Veronica who wipes Jesus' face. It is to show, re-show the face of Christ through his sweat and his blood that he is the savior of the world. The final three are how does Mary participate in this way in the cross? Certainly, we see Mary, as I said, in the fourth station, being there, meeting Jesus along the way. Then she is at the foot of the cross. And the most tragic scene is the third time when she's holding the lifeless body of her son, wailing in sorrow, but just as all of us do, await the coming of the salvation in the resurrection. There's so many others on my list, but I would like to just share a few more. The three states of afterlife heaven, hell, and purgatory. The three archangels, Gabriel, Raphael, and Michael. And of course, the three sacraments that are a part of last rites. So often we get calls and people ask us to do the last rites. They say, do we still do the last rites? And I say yes, because the last rites include three sacraments. The first is the opportunity to go to confession. The second is to be anointed as the sick, to show the preservation of the body as it prepares for death. And finally, what we call viaticum, that is the last time to receive Holy Communion. The word means on the way. So when you call, don't be afraid to ask for the last rites because that's what Father Ronyell and I bring when we come at the hour of death. And the last one on my list I just kind of wanted to speak of because we are in safe mode because we are in a situation where what we used to be able to take for granted, other maybe than a boat cruise, that we were able to get the sacred mass. What are the three things that are necessary in order that we fulfill our Sunday obligation if we cannot participate in sacred mass? We know right now the bishop has taken away the obligation to come, which allows us to be free from worrying to come during safe mode when we're vulnerable. But he didn't take away the responsibility of keeping the Sabbath holy. Three things. One, one should set aside a half hour of prayer in the place of sacred mass, which should begin with the examination of conscience and the act of contrition. The second is to participate fully in the liturgy of the Word, which means you would read the readings, reflect on them as if you were reflecting on them with the priest who was giving the homily. And finally, to make a spiritual communion so that you have the complete experience of sacred mass without being present. But that is why it's so important to us here at OSM to continue to film sacred mass for you. Because you can fulfill those three obligations as a part of keeping the Sabbath holy, but yet even fully participate, at least in the sights and sounds of mass, while you are still away. I don't know, those two cracked me up. And I I know that uh, it's so much a part of my personality, those two, but when you put them together, uh, hopefully we get the best of of all things. And I think that's what groups of threes really do, help us to realize that the three together are far better than one aspect of our faith.